Good morning, church. Welcome to worship to both those in person and those with us online on this blessed Pentecost Sunday. A special welcome as well to all of our Sunday school children this week as we're here to celebrate all that they've learned this year. Our Sunday morning worship will return to Scudder Park Beach here in Northport on June 19th and July 17th, and we hope that you'll join us down by the shore under the pavilion. As you know, our United Methodist Committee on Relief, or UMCOR, offers relief supplies following disasters all over the world. One of the most potent ways that we can help is by providing hygiene kits. Our church will be collecting items for these kits between now and June 15th through the collection box out in the narthex this morning. A list of items needed is on the box, and an email was sent out last week. It's very important that the items specified be exactly the size and type listed. Thank you for helping us prepare for the upcoming hurricane season. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us go now to the Lord and enter into God's holy presence with awe and thanksgiving. Wherever you are right now, you are in God's house, and we are all welcome in this place. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit of God, bring your mighty power into our lives. Rush through our spirits 
inspiring us to witness to the great love of God. And we will sing together, Spirit of God. Come, Holy Spirit of God, burn light, bright flames into our hearts. Emblazon us with the confident spirit of faith that our lives will show your love. Come, Holy Spirit of God, be with us today in our thoughts and our prayers. Come, Holy Spirit of God, be with us in our words and our deeds. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we rejoice greatly, loving God, in the birthday of your church, known to us as Pentecost. Your Holy Spirit has come bringing the church into reality. Likewise, your Holy Spirit emboldens the church and keeps us faithful as disciples of Christ. So we praise you, Lord, for the church that has nourished us from our childhood and continues to nourish us today. Amen. At this time, I'd like to call Rob Toyota up to come and give our children's service. You know, there's a great reading uh, today that, <coughs> that will be covered. It talks about how Everybody's speaking a different language, yet the message somehow stays, remains pure when it comes from our Lord. And we're all sort of, really, if we, we bond together and uh, we sort of keep our, our act together, we can kind of, we all get the same message no matter what background we come from, no matter what language we speak. I'm going to ask for two volunteers, and don't make me pick on you. I need two people who are pretty good at math, pretty good, add some track. So this is going to be very easy. Uh, I have not spoken to these folks beforehand, but I, I'm going to give you a little bit of an example of how, how miraculously God can work. Uh, I'm not saying God did this today, but maybe give us some influence. So I'm going to ask, oh, I don't need to know the details, but can you give me three digits from your phone? 
Just for argument's sake, okay? We're going to invert by saying, we're gonna, instead of 896, we're going to say 698. And we're going to subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. So it's 6, 9, subtract. Who wants to subtract? We're going to do the next one. You can help. Our partner team, we're together. Like your answer? Okay. So we came up with the answer of 198. Now what we're going to do here, motion, we're next, we're going to add your addition, especially. We're going to take 8, 9, 1. I don't know if anybody can see back there, but I'll, I'll, I'll walk. What we did, okay. so what we did, we took a number, a random number, I don't know what Ocean's phone number is, she gave me three digits, 896. We inverted it, and then we subtracted the smaller number from the large number. And we expertly came up with an answer of 198. Now what we did was we inverted 198, 891, and we added the two together. And we came up with exactly 1089. Well, for argument's sake, Ocean, can you please open up a letter if you have in there? Yep. Can you hold it up? One, zero, eight, nine. Did we talk before the service? Can you give a big round of applause for our business please? So give it up for our, our this is fantastic great job. Thank you. See, so really, the message here is, is not sorcery or, or, or uh, God's work per se. But maybe it is. Because the point here is different people, different backgrounds, great kids, great church family. We're all rowing the same direction. And I think the, the inspiration we get from our Lord sort of speaks to the message today about the different languages. We all are in the same direction, moving the same pathway. And I tell you what, as many of you know, Cheryl and I will be leaving the congregation physically, geographically, momentarily, the next month or so. But I, we will always feel connected to you all and to this family. I tell you what, we started doing children's time, and everybody here was about half the size. That's magic in itself. So uh, congratulations to you all, your spiritual growth, your educational growth. And I will pass the baton back over to Pastor. So thank you very much. At this time, we're going to be calling forward our Sunday school children. And Mr. Edwards Bordray, is, as our Sunday school superintendent, is going to come forward and take the program. Well, good morning. Today we have a lot to celebrate, quite a few children. And some who are not here will mention their names. We have certificates prepared for all of the children who attended Sunday school uh, this year. A very special year because it came after our Sunday school in person was shut down uh, for a year. Why was that? No, I don't know. Or, 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 something about something starting with a P. Uh, anyway, so we were back this year in full force. We had 24 students, including 
three in the nursery. And so we had two full classes, and uh, we had a very meaningful time. So I thank all the parents for uh, bringing your kids to church and uh, trusting us with their Christian education. I also thank uh, all of the adults who helped by being second adults in the classroom. Those names are in the orange insert in your bulletin. Uh, without the, those volunteers, we would not have been able to hold Sunday school because we have a safe sanctuaries policy at uh, St. Paul's where we need at least two adults in a classroom with children. So thank you uh, to those people. You can uh, read uh, those names in the program. Uh, I want to thank, of course, uh, Carrie Mae Latuso who has been the mainstay of the Sunday School for quite a long time. She taught the K through five class. Uh, I taught the uh, youth class, which is grade six through eight. And we had a very lively uh, group of students. And I, I thank those students, and I thank the parents again uh, for bringing those children uh, to church. Uh, also in the youth class, uh, Kristen McGrath was a co-teacher for half the year. She was unable to continue, so I thank her publicly now as well. So, uh, without further ado, we'd like to present some certificates uh, to all of the children who attended Sunday school this year. So, starting with the nursery, now I'm not expecting those children to come up. I'm not sure that they're here anyway. Uh, but uh, we'll acknowledge them publicly here. Uh, in the nursery, we had Kylie Rose Capra, Dominic Corso. If you want to come up, Dom, that's fine. If not, no big deal. And uh, Jonah Catandella. Uh, the Catandellas are a new family this year. They came midway through the year. We were thrilled to have them. All right, Dom. For you. Okay, congratulations. Good morning. Um, I've done this a long time because I really enjoy the children. And I had a great class this year. It was a really nice group of uh, children. I had Beth uh, Bradley Capra, who is not here, and Ellie, Ellie Jean Capra, and Amora, who is not, and her brother Noah, the new family. And I have Leo. I really enjoyed your children. They're wonderful. Thank you. All right, for the youth, um, I suggest we hold our applause to the end because uh, we have quite a, a long list here, and we'll acknowledge them and then applaud them heartily uh, at the end. So um, these are in alphabetical order. Uh, we have Ali Callahan, who will be here a little bit later, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing her here. Ashley Callahan, who is here. And Stina, actually you can come pick it up, but I'd like to hold the applause. And Stina Seisel, and thank you. And Jack Fernandez, who is not here. Um, Ocean Conti. And Christopher McGrath, who is not here. Natalie Rea. Okay. 
and Matthew Welch. Let's please give the youth a class of big hands. Thanks once again to uh, all of the parents and the adults who made this possible. We had a great year, and we look forward to next year. Thank you very much. Alex, before you run, yeah. you know, it would be really hard to have a Sunday school without a Sunday school superintendent. So we just want to say thank you to our Sunday school superintendent for all the work that you put in throughout the year and in preparation for the year. So well, on thank behalf you of the your church, leadership. thank you. The Spirit of God hovered over the waters at the moment of creation. Like the universe exploding outward from the single spark of God's word, so the church became real. Put your hand on the ground. The earth itself is vibrating. The mountains, the oceans, the deserts, the creatures that live here are all breathing in. The planet is inhaling. Imagine the song it will sing, the song of Pentecost. Joy enveloped the disciples. Their words were understood and welcomed. Their joy was contagious. Their message was heard and translated and shared. The church moved into the world, bringing light, bringing love, covering all there was. There was no denying it. There was no going back. The church as we know it was born. God, we feel your presence. Let us use it. Let us take this rush, this moment, this Pentecost, shouting into a world that is bored stiff by life. We have been made aware of the presence of the creator of the universe. Give us the strength to keep it going. God is real. The church is born. The song goes on and everyone can sing. Amen. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. 
And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Y se les aparecieron lenguas repartidas como de fuego, asentiéndose sobre cada uno de ellos. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, there were devout Jews well, from every nation under heaven living, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Good morning. Pentecost at last. <laughs> I've been waiting for Pentecost to finally arrive. Pentecost is finally here. I get super excited about this day every year, and I think there are lots of good reasons that you'll want to do the same. You see, Christians like us understand God to be a trinity, the Father or Mother, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And while the Father or Mother God is seen vividly throughout the Hebrew and Old Testament, and Jesus, the Son of God, is the focus of the Gospels. The Holy Spirit seems to get talked about a lot less. But we're going to change that today. But on the day of Pentecost, we spend some time getting to know the Holy Spirit better, and it's really important that we do. Whereas the Gospels describe the life and ministry of Jesus, the next book of the Bible, the book of Acts, describes something very different. How all the love and teachings that Jesus shared with his disciples turned into an explosion of growth across the Roman Empire. According to Christian tradition, within one lifetime, Jesus' disciples had spread the good news about Jesus as far east as India, down into Africa, and all the way up into Europe. In the Gospels, Jesus seems to be constantly correcting his disciples, and they are often described as feeling shy or afraid. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, they become bold witnesses of the kingdom of God. No matter how many people tell them to be quiet or stop talking about Jesus, they are certain that this is the most important thing that they could ever do. The world needed to know that John 3.16 now tells us this, that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Amen, church? In fact, the change in the confidence of the disciples was so pronounced that modern-day scholars often now point to it as a sign that the resurrection did, in fact, happen. Praise God. You see, church, everything changed on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost just means 50, but it was already a Jewish holiday in the time of Jesus, a harvest festival called the Festival of Weeks, or Shavuot. The Jewish Holy Day was celebrated seven weeks after the first wheat harvest and so ancient Jerusalem was full with those who had come to partake of the holiday. While the temple in Jerusalem still stood at that time, there were believers in God that had spread out far and wide. A Jewish diaspora that had resulted from the conquering of Israel and Judah several hundred years earlier. They may have lived in different places, but they gathered together in Jerusalem for festivals like Pentecost whenever they could. The problem with being spread out like that is that they can be hard to keep your faith in God when you don't have other people around that you believe. Maybe you know. It's hard to practice your faith and to trust God when you don't have some friends to help you. Amen? And so Acts 2, 9 through 11, lists people from all over the Roman Empire and even beyond who happen to come together to practice their Jewish faith and who just happen to be present on the day that the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit, came to Christ's early disciples. 
Acts 2.5 says that there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. Because in an upper room, the disciples were waiting. When Jesus had ascended into heaven ten days earlier, he told them to wait until the Holy Spirit came to empower and to guide them. And the Christ, that Christ promised the Spirit would come. When the day of Pentecost had come, the scripture attests, Jesus' disciples were all together in one place. Maybe not unlike the way we are right now. Following Jesus had brought them all together, and they were united as they waited for God's promises to come true at last. Even before the Holy Spirit came, they were united by their love for Christ and for their vision that a world that is friends with God is better than a world without God. In that holy moment, the Holy Spirit came to them like the sound of a rushing wind. Wave those banners around. A sound of a rushing wind. Make that noise for me. The sound of a rushing wind. That's the beginning of what it sounded like. It was like a freight train coming through the town. The sound of a rushing wind. And as if tongues of fire rested over their heads. And they were not burned. The presence of God was often described as a holy fire. Think Moses and the burning bush. It was burning but not consumed. Or Jeremiah saying that the message that God had given him was like a fire shut up in his bones that just had to get out. This, this was different. This was an anointing, a pouring out of God's own spirit upon a group of those ready to see the world transformed. The Bible testifies in Genesis 1-1 that God's spirit hovered over the waters at the dawn of creation. And it was through the breath of God's spirit that all of creation began. In fact, the word in Hebrew for spirit is ruach. The same word for spirit is the same word for breath. So when God breathes, it says that God pours God's spirit out over creation, and the spirit of God hovers over the waters, ready to create something, something new. So when the Holy Spirit then came to them on Pentecost, it was because they were ready to partner with God in that incredible creative work. Through the Holy Spirit's presence within them and through them, the disciples would follow the example of Jesus. Led by the Spirit of God, they would become dedicated teachers and preachers. And before that day was over, the Bible attested 3,000 people became saved and believed in Jesus. They would heal people in Jesus' name, and people would be astounded when they saw what these former fishermen and tax collectors had to offer the world. They would stand before governors and kings defiantly with a message of God's salvation and would inspire people to ensure that everyone in their midst had enough to live on. Walking around with the Holy Spirit inside of them, they would know an intimacy with God that was only known to a few people before them. Think Adam and Eve talking with God in the Garden of Eden. And they'd share the good news that it was possible for anyone who has devoted themselves to Christ. The book of Acts goes on to describe time after time in which the Holy Spirit seems to whisper in their ears and say, Joanne, I've got a message for you. Ken, I've got a message for you. Jen, I've got a message for you. Diana, I've got a message for you. Nancy, I've got a message for you. Judy, I've got a message for you. And they were responsive and listened to what God had to say. And they did. And the world grew in leaps and bounds. People came together in ways they could never have imagined before because they were united by the Spirit of Christ, the same Spirit that is poured out over us. And because they, who would, they and those who would follow them, even to the present generation, have allowed the Holy Spirit to guide them, people of every tribe and nation, every tongue and culture, have heard the good news that we are beloved children of God in their own language in ways that they can understand. So church today, in a way, is the church's birthday. The day in which the Holy Spirit came to us and brought us together in a brand new, fresh way. How many of you kids like birthdays? Any kids like birthdays? Some of us, even as adults, still like birthdays. I like them. Any of you kids like birthdays? Right? Now what do we get on birthdays? We get gifts on birthdays, right? Who said that? 
We got gifts on birthdays. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Mom knows. We got gifts on birthdays, right? Well, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. In fact, the adults talked about that way back in January and February. The Holy Spirit was given to us at our baptisms, but you may not have noticed her until this present moment. But keep in mind that the Holy Spirit is here with us, and the gifts that God gives us are gifts that are unique to us. Yeah, we have some things that are all alike. Yes, we are often guided by the Holy Spirit, and that is a gift that's given to each of us. But each of us is unique and wonderful and beautiful, created in the image of God. And because of that uniqueness, we are able to share with the entire world, the whole world, the message that God cares for them and for us. So the Holy Spirit flows through us. The Holy Spirit fills us enriches our lives to the point of overflowing. So today, let the Holy Spirit fill you. Find cause to go out and share the good news that God cares about each one of us and help us to find the same Spirit, different ministries with the same Lord, different activities with the same God who produces all of these things in every of us and every single one of us. If we are listening, and willing to allow God's Spirit to empower our witness and creative work in this world, then the world will change. Let the Spirit of God flow richly in you then, church, and bring forth a harvest like no one on that first Pentecost could have dreamed. Wave your Holy Spirit streamers, stay united in our common cause, so that God's groaning creation, God's burning creation, God's groaning creation, will finally have the power to grasp love's width and its breath, its height and its depth, together with all the believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh in your people gathered here and in all places this day. May the world know your desire for all people to praise and give thanks. In our differences, bring unity. In our lethargy, bring life. In our despair, bring hope. Surprising God, generous God, your spirit is among us, sending us into new adventures, opening new doors, exploring possibilities beyond our dreams. May we be a people filled with desire to respond, with the energy for your purpose, for the centeredness that only your spirit can bring. Grant us new life in the spirit this very day, we pray. Amen. Amen. So it is with the confidence of the children of God that we are bold to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
of God, then, let us stand and sing our doxology together as the ushers bring forward our offering of our hearts and all of our gifts. Loving and everlasting God, giver of every good gift, Lord, we celebrate you this day in all your forms, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for all that you mean to us, to your church, throughout generation to generation. You still are God. Lord, we offer up from the bounty of our diverse gifts today and pray that you would use these gifts in the service of your kingdom. Create in our world a freshness, a newness, and a richness that we have never known. And may these instruments be instruments of that future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. When you could wait no longer, heart of joy, you spoke into being the world which silenced chaos. You sent your breath racing across the waters, stirring them into motion and life. You clothed the sunset in crimson and gold. You dusted the mountains with fresh dew every morning. You offered us all that is true, is beautiful, is good. But we laughed at you placing you outside our lives as we reached out to touch the hem of sin and death. Your love for us was wonderfully enduring as you sent prophet after prophet that we might hear your voice calling to us. You, you watched, you hoped, and when you could wait no longer for us, you sent your word to answer our cries from the depths of our brokenness. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Your glory, listening heart, rests upon all creation. Your praises are sung throughout the universe. Because your love is ever faithful, because you are generous beyond all measure, you sent Jesus to finish what you have begun. Overflowing with the riches of your grace, he emptied himself so we might be filled. Embracing our constant companions, suffering, he healed us so we might know hope. Broken on the cross and laid in the cold grave, you took him by the hand saying, get up, and he paved the path of resurrection so we could follow him into eternity.
On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Will you repeat after me? Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come again. O God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those gathered with us online right now. And upon these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. This is the cup of our salvation and the ground of our hope. So then, sisters and brothers, I invite you to come forward now. You're invited to come either and receive from us here. You may go to the altar and receive there or take it back to your seats and receive there. If you're with us online at home, please prepare your elements at this time. Please join me in the prayer after receiving. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table, 
for we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Church, please rise and sing with me, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, number 334 in your red hymnals or on your screen. Go forth now in power, church, full of the sweet, sweet spirit of God. Let your love be genuine. Hold fast to what is good. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. And persevere in prayer. And may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>